All right, guys, it's time to dive the sugar wreck. So far in Blue Wilderness, we've explored the world of sharks. Huge sharks, and lots of them. But there's, of course, much more to see in the world's oceans than just its top marine predators. Today, we are going to investigate the remains of our very first shipwreck. This dive site near Grand Bahama, known to locals as the Sugar Wreck, consists of the scattered remains of an ill-fated molasses steamer, of which we know very little. However, wrecks such as these are actually quite common throughout the Bahamas and the Caribbean. And what makes this site particularly interesting isn't its sunken treasure, but is the abundance of marine life that now calls the ship home. These wrecks often form microhabitats, almost like an artificial reef, that can become hot spots for divers to view an incredible diversity of species. And little did I know, amongst the wreckage, we would have the most unexpected wildlife encounter I had ever experienced. Ready? Yep. This is always the exciting part. Getting clipped in. So once you're done, that means you're ready to get in the water. All right. All right, guys. It's time to dive the sugar wreck. It's pretty shallow, but we're gonna get a lot of bottom time. Dive her down. Upon entering the water, we saw the wreckage right away. Long metal panels and ribs of the hull scattered the sea floor. Not much was recognizable, that is until we saw the anchor. Judging by its size, this was one massive vessel. And of course, along with the ship, was an abundance of fish. The fields of debris were absolutely cloaked in a cape of marine creatures. Schools of snapper and yellow grunts made up the majority of the fish surrounding the site. But on closer inspection, we were able to identify angelfish, filefish, pesky invasive lionfish, and we even found a large conch. Have you ever seen their eyes before? Whoa, how crazy is that? And of course, no dive is complete without a good shark sighting. One particular reef shark became very interested in us. Actually, maybe a little too interested. Watch out, buddy. But like every adventure, we were on the lookout for something special. Anytime we have cameras in our hands, we're always looking for something that intrigues us, something that truly stands out from the crowd and almost makes you point the lens in its direction. And you never really know when that's going to happen, but when it does, filming gets really exciting. Suddenly, from under the wreck, I spotted a small porcupine fish. What a cool creature. These little guys have so much personality, I had to try for a closer look. But as soon as I got closer to the spiny fish, it floated out into the open and began to slowly head to another part of the site. But not too quickly. Just a slow, gentle cruise in another direction. And for some reason, I felt as if it wanted me to follow it. Don't ask me why, but this moment reminded me of one of my favorite scenes from the Disney movie, The Sword in the Stone. The one where young Arthur follows Merlin around the lake after they both turn to fish? Yeah, that one. So I thought, let's see where this goes. And just as I had hoped, the little fish was leading me right towards something much bigger. As we cruised together across the wreckage, I lost sight of Mario and found myself on a side of the wreck we had not yet explored. The debris here was much larger and more cavernous. The cracks in the wreckage were deep and its contents were hidden from sight. Then suddenly, and without warning, the fish dove into a crevice and in an instant, it was gone. 
To be honest, I felt a little let down because I'd hoped we'd take a rest so I could get some better footage. And so had Mario, who at this point had caught up to us and had actually been following along the entire time. We both looked back toward the hall fragments where our new friend had disappeared. And then, out of the shadows, emerged a truly giant porcupine fish. It was huge. I couldn't believe my eyes. Never before had I seen one so enormous. But to my amazement, there were actually more of them. One by one, they popped out of hiding to inspect us and say hello. In fact, before long, I realized that we were completely surrounded and absolutely being swarmed by huge porcupine fish. What luck. Not only would we be able to get some amazing footage, but we were also about to witness some unique behaviors. Porcupine fish, also known as blowfish, inhabit tropical waters and reefs all over the world. Not to be confused with their cousins, the puffer fish, porcupine fish can easily be distinguished by the visible spines covering their bodies. They do tend to be primarily found amongst reefs, and in this case, shipwrecks, and feed on a variety of hard shell invertebrates like urchins, crabs, mollusks, and shrimp. Their beak-like mouths are specifically designed for these kinds of prey. And of course, their most famous trait when agitated is the ability to inflate their bodies and erect their spines outward to fend off any would-be predators. But the spines themselves are not venomous. And while impressive, we hopefully wouldn't be seeing any of these displays today because our goal was to remain in the presence of the fish and disturb them as little as possible. However, I must say, these spot fin porcupine fish were by far the largest ones we had ever seen. And one of them was particularly huge and also very dominant. It was almost the size of a watermelon, if you could believe it. My guess is we had stumbled upon a colony of porcupine fish and were observing some courtship behaviors. But the fish themselves did genuinely seem curious about us and our presence. Almost like you'd expect a dolphin to behave, the fish were surprisingly playful. They would swim up and almost invite contact. The experience was absolutely surreal. In general, I would never advise anyone to make contact with a reef fish, but this circumstance was clearly special. And since I was wearing gloves to protect both myself and the fish, I gently reached out my hand and they got even closer. In fact, they got so close, they would almost make <gasps> One actually made contact with me. I couldn't believe it. Like a puppy, it seemed to enjoy brushing its belly and head against my glove. This was by far the most unexpected interaction we could have ever predicted. And it wasn't just one either. They all began to join in. I was literally palling around with a school of porcupine fish. After about 10 minutes of enjoying each other's company, our air was beginning to run low. So I gave Mario the signal, we both said our goodbyes, and headed back toward the boat. That was sweet! Woo! Let's get dried off. All right, well, we're back on the boat. The sugar wreck was amazing. We saw sharks, we saw all kinds of fish. I certainly didn't expect to get surrounded by porcupine fish, but on today's adventure, that's exactly what happened. I'm Mark Vins, be brave, stay wild. We'll see you on the next dive. If you enjoyed this dive, make sure to go back and watch the time we got surrounded by giant tiger sharks. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can join me and the crew on our next aquatic adventure.